In 2015, the Western Front Association Vice Chairman David Tattersfield and his wife Dawn were visiting the Commonwealth War Graves Commission Cemetery at Jean Cherie Survey in the area of the Chemin des Dames. The area had been subjected to a large-scale German attack in May 1918 and thousands of men from British divisions had been killed as a result of this attack. Many of these men could not be identified and were buried in unknown graves. It was one of these unknown headstones in Jean Cherie British Cemetery that caught David's eye and resulted in the following BBC Radio Scotland interview which was broadcast in May 2018. I just came across it really by almost by accident. I, I uh, visit the First World War battlefields quite a lot, and um, one area that I've not been to particular is an area called the Chemin des Dames, uh, which is uh, much further south than the normal battlefields of the Somme. And uh, it's not very well visited this area by First World War battlefield visitors. So I was wandering around, um, me and my wife were wandering around the cemetery at a place called John Cherry and noticed the headstone of an unknown. Major of the Royal Engineers. Now, headstones in First World War cemeteries are often named, but sometimes unknown. Sometimes, of course, they do have a little bit of information, such as uh, either the rank or the regiment or the date of death or that kind of thing. But so this one had had a combination of both the Royal Engineers and the rank, which uh, suggested to me that it was going to be possible, just possible, that we might be able be able to identify who who the a soldier was lay, laying in this in this grave, and 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 so it proved. It worked out that that this could really only be one individual who was buried in this in this grave, which was Major Alexander, as I thought he was called, Souter. Tell us a little bit about Major Souter. What, what, what do we know about him, and how did he reach the rank of major? We don't know what happened after he left school. But we do find we do find that he enlisted as a left, second lieutenant in the Royal Engineers in 1914, and he was uh, soon promoted to lieutenant. So he was out in France um, for the Battle of the Somme, and subsequently was also uh, involved in the very well known Battle of Third Battle of Ypres, which is more commonly known as the Battle of Passchendaele. Um, he was actually promoted to uh, captain after which he was actually promoted to the rank of Major and took command of his own field company, Royal Engineers. Now, you have uh, managed to locate some details of actually how he died. Can, can you describe that for us? So Alist- Alistair Souter and another officer from his field company, of Royal Engineers, went out from the trenches to reconnoitre what was going on, and it was at that point where a German sniper seems to have shot at Alistair and killed him. The other officer who was with him was was also injured. We do find that um, the other officer was was pulled into a ditch, but we don't exactly know what happened to Alistair's body. How important do you think it is for families to get this information? We know, obviously, it's 100 years on, but it, it must be very satisfying for yourself to be able to provide them with this information. It's absolutely the right thing to do and, and also does give you a, a great sense of achievement to be able to bring the story to, to the to the family's attention and I'm sure from the family's point of view that it's a, a lot better for them to have a focus for them to, to understand what happened in the First World War to the relative rather than the name just being inscribed on a memorial to the missing they actually now have a, a named headstone for their for their relative. I'm sure David there must be hundreds of stories like this still out there. I'm sure there must, but unfortunately, most of these will not be ever able to be told simply because the unknown soldiers will remain unknown. It was only this particular peculiar set of circumstances that enabled me, quite fortuitously, to to discover who was laying there and to identify this particular grave as being that of Alistair Souter. For the last 100 years, in this graveyard in France, lay the remains of a young Scottish soldier. Major Alexander Souter was one of the many to have fallen in World War I. But until recently, his family didn't know where he had died or where he had been laid to rest. Well, today, his relatives were finally able to pay their respects. And our reporter, Ian McInnes, is in northern France for us tonight, and he takes up the story. Ian. 
Well, Jackie, it's been a remarkable day here in the northern town of jean sur surville Now, this cemetery is full of graves to unknown soldiers, and sadly, many of them will remain that way, unknown. But for one family tonight, they have at least some of the answers they've been looking for. This most French town awoke this morning to a very different sound. Marking a hundred years since the death of a previously unknown Scottish soldier killed in the region. We now know him to be Major Alexander Souter, or Alistair as he was better known, of the Royal Engineers. Alistair, the eldest of the family, spent most of his youth in Thurso on the north coast, where his father was minister in the United Free Church. Alistair, like so many others who lost their lives, is remembered here on the War Memorial in the Thurso town centre. But since his death, many questions have arisen about where exactly Alistair was buried. And that search takes us to France and the picture postcard town of Hermanville, where Alistair lost his life. So we believe the Germans came down just from they came, up there on the hill? I believe that the Germans came over this hill and swept down into towards the village of Hermanville below us and unfortunately Alistair lost his life um, in that action. Almost on these very tracks? On these tracks indeed and it seems that he was out on patrol when uh, he was shot when he raised his rifle upon coming across a, um, a group of Bosch as, as they call them. Remembering that day a hundred years on Major Souter's family Nobody knew where he was, nobody knew where his final resting place was. Uh, I recognised his sacrifice by naming my son after him, uh, but it's great for us to be actually come and f see his final resting place, and I think that he, his soul feels happy that his family is with him again. I really think this is a good experience for me because I can know more about who I was named after, and... Um, I, now I know, like, a bit about World War One. When we say each year on Remembrance, we will remember them, that should be a living continuing. It isn't we'll remember them until t the 10th year or the 20th year. And the rededication and change of an exchange of a headstone at 100 years anniversary is fitting but no less poignant. But as one family remembers, many graves remain unknown, as Alistair's did for so long. Ian McInnes, reporting Scotland in northern France. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Here end of the lesson. Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead 
short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine on each of your faces. And may the rain fall soft upon the fields of your lives. And until we meet again, may God hold you and all those whom we remember this day in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us always, and with all those that we remember this day. Amen. Amen.